It looks like someone was looking for something. I hope Tigran's okay. Looks like something is behind it. There seems to be a mechanism for the lock. Open sesame. Who needs you, bear? <gasps> I've left her there. I did. On that creaky old pier. It was more of a suggestion than a decision. I was walking slowly, just waiting for her to turn around, to yell at me to come back. Anything. She didn't. I've come to expect that from her. She's really headstrong. Difficult. Thomas, I can see traces of you in her eyes. The same look, that same twinkle when adventure calls. But most of the time, she just marches on to the beat of some other drummer. The one I can't hear so well anymore. I made a promise to you. Back then, when she was born, promises and old age don't go well together. She's constantly getting me in tough spots and it's getting impossible for me to keep up. It was easier with you. We thought we could really make a difference. You and I, remember? We thought we could clean up this dump together. But then, you changed. You grew up. It happened so fast. With Amber, I feel she can do it all on her own. And I'm just here for the ride. I'm not blaming you, I never did. Even when Margaret knocked on the office doors and I saw that stupid look in your eyes, I knew. I knew our time was coming to an end. I watched you both grow up, and I remember you two becoming best friends. I was there for your wedding, man. I remember you coming home with your son a year later. You were so proud, and I was happy for you. A couple of years later, Amber came along, and I could smell trouble all over her. She was bad news from the start. When she grabbed and hugged me for the first time, my eye popped, but she was laughing. It was funny to her. I guess it was funny to me, too. Oh boy, I thought, this will never work. But it kind of did. I admire her in a way. Everything is new and exciting to her, and she embraces life with both hands until its eyes pop out. As King said, she really is something else. You made me promise I would always keep her safe. And God knows, I tried even though she wasn't making it easy for me. I can tell you that much. This thing that's happening to her now, I feel she has to do this on her own. Besides, she said it herself. She doesn't need me anymore. And I need her as I need a bullet to my head. What I do need is a drink. I think I earned one after all. So, where are we on that drink, pal? As I already told you, I'm not running a goddamn charity here, Ted. Times is tough. Besides, my name is Jameson, as you know. But you just kept referring to me as Thomas this whole time. Who the hell is Thomas? Hey, did I ask for your life story? Just get me a damn drink. You know I'm good for it. I don't, actually. You have an extensive tab here, Ted. You have to start paying soon, man. I told you this already. You damn squid. Who did you call first when you thought your wife was having an affair, hmm? Well, you. But you charged me for it. Yeah, well, you know, times is tough. 
At least I give you a friends and family discount. No, actually. You overcharged me for your field expenses, which were basically just you drinking here for free and having me drive you home every night. What's your point? My point is... And how can I put this lightly? You have to start paying for your goddamn booze, Bear. How's the missus? Oh, you know, she's doing okay. Wherever she is. Women, huh? <laughs> Tell me about it. Just give the man a drink, Jay. It's on me. Hey, Headless. When did you get here? I was literally here this whole time. You were actually telling me your story, but you kind of switched to Jay here mid-sentence. We thought it was weird, so we had a discussion about it while you were talking. You see... We both think this whole Amber thing is troubling you more than you're willing to admit. How'd you figure? You care for the girl, Ted, more than anyone else. You have just basically told us your whole life story, even though we resisted actively. I mean, I tuned out so many times. I did my taxes in the meantime. Jay did his taxes. Anyways, all I'm saying is you're usually not the talkative type, and here you are just rambling on for the past hour or so. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was being a burden on you, too. Come on, don't be like this, Ted. You're really still relatively relevant, you know? Yeah, sure, buddy. You're all that. Whatever, you lowlifes. Some friends you are. Go after the girl, Ted. She needs your help more than ever now. We all do. This is the time for a man to show who he really is. All that effort, it means nothing if you leave her now, when she needs you the most. Never thought of you as a quitter, honestly. <laughs> I did. He often quits on paying his tab. All right. You've made your point, goddammit. I'll get you the money by the end of the month. <laughs> sure. Now don't you go getting shot on me in the meantime. I could never do that to you, buddy. Go find her, Ted. She's probably alone and scared, and no matter what falling out you two had, I'll bet you my bottom dollar she wishes her partner is with her on this one. Yeah, I guess. What the hell am I doing anyways? Talking to a couple of village idiots instead of finishing the goddamn case. How could I leave her like that? I mean rude. Right. I have to go and find her. She needs my help. Headless, you got this, right? Right? Sure. Put this on his tab, too. Um... No time to talk. I have to go. These were criminally underused in the last episode. I'll just take these, again. Looks unused. Maybe it'll come in handy. A glass slide? Maybe I can view it somehow. Huh. As if this place wasn't creepy enough without flickering imagery. If projectionist school taught me anything, this is where you put in the slides. I can barely make out the outline on it. Let's see if this will work. Here goes nothing. Another slide. Hmm. Is this the last one? Another slide. Hmm. Is this the last one?
the hell is this? It's like a narrative of our case. What's going on? How could Tigran know about this? Every major event is here. Everything we did so far. How is this possible? Took you long enough. I was tied up with my work. Never thought I'd live to see the day, to be honest. You, me both, Snoop, it's a milestone. So, there goes the Westpaw Casino. Well, one less thing for you to worry about, am I right? That old joint. That was just a cover-up. The shady stuff was always done behind the scenes. Besides, don't worry. I'm sure King has more than enough stashed away. He'll be fine. Mind if I take notes? Knock yourself out, pal. You know the drill. No quotes, no names. No problem. Can't think of what'll happen next, you know? What do you mean? You know what happens when someone steps on King's toes, Ted? Casino was his bread and butter. He's not gonna let that slide. I had a chat with him last night. I have a feeling he's going to pass on this one. Red? Yeah. These are terrible times, Bear. I know, Sam. I wanted to talk to you about this, Ted. Something is fishing in Paper City, and it's not just a fish market. You got that, too. Huh. Let's not talk about it here. There might be some seagulls around. What? Uh, nothing. Anyway, I have a couple of leads left, and the night's still young. I'll catch you later tonight, and we'll talk. Sounds like a plan. Anyways, I need to get closer so I can have a chat with that Barry fellow. Brian? Yeah, that's what I said. Those PCPD clowns are not going to let me get close, though. I'm sure you have a way of circumventing these types of situations. Usually, I do. But seeing as Commissioner is here, it'll take more than a pamphlet to get me inside this time. Pamphlet? Don't worry about it. Two stupid dogs. Please move away, sir. This here is a crime scene. Oh, okay. For a second there, I thought it was an accident. God damn it, Dudley. What? The official statement, man. Oh, yeah. Um, please move away, sir. There's been a terrible accident. Sure, sure. You guys mind if I have a quick chat with your fellow police officer there? Bradley. Uh, Brian? That's what I said. No one's allowed. Okay, never mind. I see Locke's here. Seems strange he would come down to investigate an accident. The commissioner's here because of the press. It's better if he deals with the media himself. I can imagine. Hey, buddy, who the hell are you anyways? Me? Oh. I was just on my way to work when I saw the sky light up like a goddamn 4th of July, you know? And what is it that you do exactly? Sam Blabbermouth Murphy, Paper City's top news hound. You have any dirt on those two idiots by the site? Just anything? <laughs> well, the one on the left is Dudley. He got married recently. His wife, Mary, works over at Paper City General as a nurse. The other one is Bob. He was the best man at Dudley's wedding. Rumor has it Mary and Bob used to date in high school. Well, that's an angle if I ever saw one. Do your worst, buddy. So, buddy, who the hell are you? I work over at the Paper City General. Really? My wife works there, too. Uh, do you know her? What's her name? Mary. Mary Robbins. She's a... A nurse. I know Mary. Such a sweet girl. She's always telling me about you, Bob. You're a lucky guy, let me tell ya. Yeah, she is, and, uh... Wait, Bob? My name's Dudley. He's Bob. What the hell? Oh, boy. I'm sorry. She's always telling me about her high school sweetheart and how he's so handsome, and I just thought, you know what, forget I said anything. Mary said I'm handsome, huh? Come on, man, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, it could have been any number of Mary Robbins down at the Paper City General who are married and think their high school boyfriends are handsome still. Yeah, I guess you're right. Denial, man. Look it up. Idiots. So, what are your plans now? Nothing, Sam. The married one is a complete idiot. Well, here's a scoop, Snoop. It seems Mary went to visit her relatives two weeks ago down to Cardboardville. She went alone. Hmm. The plot thickens. 
Coincidentally, Bob went there on some two-day seminar called The Amazing World of Bubbles that same weekend. Now, I'm not a gambling man, but if I were... Thanks, Sam. Here goes nothing. Oh, it's you again. Ruined any marriages in the meantime, bud? What? Oh, no. I was just leaving and wanted to say goodbye. Going on someone else's vacation? I'm going down to Cardboardville to attend some seminar. Mary is always talking about that place. She went down there two weeks ago and she brought the best saltwater taffy this side of Dredge River. Let me tell you. Oh yeah, I know. And check this. Bob was there a couple of weeks ago as well. He was attending that, uh, Bubbles seminar. Didn't you, Bob? Um, yeah, it was only okay, though, um... Small world indeed. <sighs> oh, for the love of... Mary's having an affair with Bob here, you stupid idiot. I mean... Smooth, Ted! I'm sorry, Sam. This was getting ridiculous. Bob? Is this true? What? Um, no. Come on, man. Who are you going to believe? Your best man or some... some lawyer slash actor? I knew it! I seriously doubt that. You were always so jealous of me. You just couldn't let me have her, could you? Jealous of you? Don't make me laugh. Besides, she told me she only married you for the money. Money? You son of a... <laughs> Ow! Uh, 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 take that! Uh, you son of a... Ooh, I never wanted to Paper City's finest, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you little... Uh, you were my best friend! Oh, no. What's going on over there? Those two. They're just horsing around. Mr. Bear? Surprised to see you here. Hey, there. You? It's Brian, sir. Brian. Sure, I knew that. Anyways, what an unfortunate accident. Am I right? Accident? Um... Sure. Listen, was anyone here when this... accident... went down? You're worried about Miss Ashworth? Huh. Worried? Don't get smart with me, Chief. Now, was anyone here is what I'm asking. Only Mr. King and some of his associates. They all made it out in time, though. Seems like Mr. King cut the gala short and escorted everyone out at some point. It's almost like he was expecting this to happen. Huh. Weird. And, um... Miss Ashworth? You know, sure. Whatever. Fortunately, Miss wasn't here at the time. Any idea where she is? Last I've heard, she was seen at the Paper City Harbor, taking a cab to King's Island. Harbor? What's her game? I'm not sure, Mr. Bear. But it seems to me Miss is following Mr. King and his associates. God damn it. She's still looking for Tigran Jones. This can't end well. Oh, I'll say. Um, Mr. Bear, I'm not supposed to share this information with you. But something big is going down at the King's place later tonight. It would be better if you hurry on down there before... Before what? The Commissioner is planning... Hey! What's going on down there? Brian, son, go and stop those two idiots. This is not a place for horsing around. Right away, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Bear. I have to go. Wait, Sport. What were you... Ted, what are you doing here? This is still under official investigation. You know the rules. Don't worry about me, Sarge. I'm just passing through. Going somewhere in particular? I'm going down to Kokomo. Kokomo? Yeah. My plan is to get there fast and then just take it slow. You know. Stop being such a wise guy, Ted. It's not good for your health. Huh. <laughs> if I had a nickel. You'd probably drink it down. Move along now. There's nothing to see here. Can't really tell if this is your official statement or just your apathy talking. I suggest you walk away if you don't want to spend the night in the slammer, Snoop. Resorting to threats, are we? I hope I've made my point. See you around, Sarge. My regards to the missus. Mr. Taxi Driver, will you wait for me? Keep the meter running and that stuff. Why are you whispering, little wench? I'm here incognito. I mean, it's a stealthy mission, you know? Ah, uh, but there's no one around. Oh, right. 
Anyways. Anyways, I'll be here. It's all the same to me where I get drunk. Don't look at it like that. The choice of ambiance is very important in creating the atmosphere or foundation, if you will, which then in turn creates a mood more suitable for relaxation or the main floor, figuratively speaking. And after all the requirements have been met, on the very top or the roof, relaxation helps in the absorption and digestion of alcohol. So, you know, it's not really. You know, you've spoken more words right now than my wife in 40 years of marriage. I'll take that as a compliment. What was that? What was what? I thought I heard something. You sure it wasn't you? No. I didn't hear anything, but I think I'm in some kind of sonic shock still. I guess, see you later. Aye. Looks like the tip of a boat hook. It's a piece of sailor's rope. Hope I'll find some use for it. Oh, I love these stones that you pile up and then relax next to. They rock. Ugh, who knew rocks would be this heavy? Ted would probably kick it if he was here. He's so clumsy. I feel like MacGyver. McAmber. Hope this will hold. It should really be heavy enough now. Well, I got that hooked. There, now I need to pull that somehow. There, it packs quite some force now. was just insanely loud. It'll be a miracle if they didn't hear that. There's a staircase there. Should we go up, Ted? Uh, sure thing, doll. You know, I'm so grumpy all the time and stuff. Come on, Ted. Cheer up. We got this. It's your call, doll. You are always much smarter than me. I'm just, like, a stupid bear, you know? I know. It's okay. I still love you. Hmm. Snooping around, girl. You're spending too much time with that bear of yours. Whom I'm spending my time with is none of your business, um, Mr. King. <laughs> Sharp tongue you got there. You're becoming more and more like Ted with each day. Ugh, I hope not. Trouble down at the agency? He left me. Probably went somewhere to get drunk and bore someone to death with his make-believe problems. I'm sorry to hear that. But you see, everything ends eventually. 
There's a major concern regarding you and the Red Man girl. Why do you think he's after you? I... I don't know. He's done something to my brother, and now he wants to get me too. And I know you wanted to hand me over to him. Why? I'm not a good man, girl. All my life, I was on the wrong side of the Finns. When the Red Men came down to Paper City, it soon became very clear there's no stopping him. You see, I thought I could make the best out of a hopeless situation. So you made a deal with him? We tried, but it wasn't right. Seeing you again after all that time reminded me, in a way, who we owe our debts to. What do you mean? You made this city, girl. We should stand with you and try to fight off this menace together. But you can only face him when you're ready. So it's best to take you out of the city until then. If you stay here for too long... I'm not leaving. It's for your own good. Don't tell me what's good for me. You tried to sell me down the river. It was a mistake on my part. I see that now. But you have to trust me. Why would I trust you now? What's changed? Can't you see? The end is coming. Our world will burn. No way around it. So you thought you could make up for the lifetime of wrongdoing by making a stand at the end? Seems a bit hypocritical if you ask me. Is there a deadline on repentance? I... Where's Tigran? I need to talk to her. Tigran is long gone, girl. She's not coming back. Not any time soon, at least. What did you do to her? <sighs> Who do you take me for? She left on her own. It's what she does. You care for her. I did. Once. So you didn't send your men to kidnap her? Of course not. I sent them there to recover my candle and... It's the police! Hmm. They followed you here. Go downstairs and hide. Why would I hide? I did nothing wrong. They're not here because of me, girl. What do you mean? Nil sent his lackeys to get you. King, we have your place surrounded. We know the girl's in there. Hand her over and no one has to get hurt. Well, seems like a good time to make your stand now. <laughs> Goodbye, girl. Don't ever grow up. Goodbye? You're handing me over to them? Don't be silly. Then why did you... Okay, boys. This is it. Stay away from the windows and shoot at anything that wags its tail. Now would be a good time for you to hide. I can help. I'd rather if you didn't. Now go. Ah, that really hit the spot. God bless you, Bear. This is exactly what I needed. Oh, what a terrible ordeal, Bear. Okay, so you got the booze. I need you to start talking, pal. Oh, it was terrible, Bear. I took the girl over there and she told me to wait. And evidently, you did. Why, I had to get out of there, Bear. The place turned into a goddamn war zone. Was it the police? Aye, those crooks. I guess they wanted for King to hand them the girl. Did he? Well, I couldn't see anything, because I was running away and all. But uh, I don't think so. Listen, pal, I really need you to take me there. Aye, I'll take you there, but for a favor. That was the only bottle I had. No, King has something of mine, and I want it back. A suitcase. Sure. I'll see what I can do. Hmm. What's in the suitcase? You mind your own goddamn business, Bear. Fair enough. Let's go and try not to capsize this thing. Well, who do you take me for? Ducky, old buddy. You ready? What, what the...
Oh, it got smashed good, like a pumpkin. Hmm, there seems to be a key inside. I can think of a couple of uses for these. I'll just keep them on me. There seems to be a loose brick in there. Hmm, maybe I can pull it out. Hmm, a key. There seems to be a key in there, right under the plush-eating piranha. Outsmarted a fish. That's quite an accomplishment, Ted. King can afford some really nice toys. Yeah, can't help feeling this wouldn't happen if it was made out of lead. One can never have enough keys. You can really feel the vanity. Hmm, seems like a mechanism popped a couple of books out. Blackmailing for Dummies by K. Maranzano. As if he can read. How to Buy Friends and Assassinate People by I. Luciano. The Shark Father, written by N. Mongano. Lonnie Frasco, written by G. Galliano. Thank you, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> took... took you long enough. Why do people keep telling me that? She's gone, Ted. I figured as much. They really did a number on you. It... it was Mills. That back... stabbing son of a... Hang in there. I'll call for help. Come on, Ted. We both know this is the end of the line. I see you and your boys took a lot of them with you. Must have been one hell of a fight. <sighs> it was only... okay. Is she... <sighs> she's fine. But seeing as she's in their hands now, she won't be fine... <laughs> for long. What about your candle there? I thought you were protected. Uh, I... I couldn't get the damn thing to work. Only she can... Tigrin? Where is she? Oh, who knows? It's near impossible for her to settle down dead. She's as wild as they come. It's what I loved about her the most. What were you trying to accomplish, King? <sighs> I made a mistake, Pear. I... was afraid. I thought... If I hand the girl over to the Red Men, the city would be safe. But she is the city. Without her, there's nothing. And Mills? Mills has gone insane. It was him who burned down the mill, Ted. I had my suspicions. And he tried to pin it on you. Why? There's no honor among thieves.
spare. We had a gentleman's agreement about the elections, but I guess that pig likes to run unopposed. He was meeting with the red man behind my back all the while, pretending to be concerned about her well-being. He doesn't care for the girl to it, only himself. So now what? They're handing her over to Red? Is that the plan? I really don't know. Although, that sounds about right. Did? Yeah. Uh, this vault behind me. You'll find everything in there. There's enough dirt in that vault to put Mills away for good. Make sure you give that evidence to someone you can trust. To someone you know. Rest now. I'll rest to an undead. God damn it. We never got along. But I have to hand it to you, King. You turned out to be a bigger man than anyone in this entire hellhole of a town, King. Look on my works, ye mighty and despair. Seems like there's a key on him. Here we go. Two more to go. Almost there. Okay, that's the keys. Now what? No idea what that is. Easy peasy. It says pig on it. I'd place my bet on this one. I'll hold on to it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. I promised that shipwreck I'd get back to him. I'll just take his purse with me. What happened? King's dead. 
Let's go. Dead holy barnacle! What about the girl? She's not here. Well, that's good. Did you get my... stuff? Yeah. Let's go. Where to now, Bear? Take me back to the shore. Aye. Strange night, Bear. It's about to get stranger. King passing away like that made me realize he was the only one of this sinister bunch to show me some integrity in the end. I have to give him some credit for that. Seems like an underwhelming end for the king of crime, if you ask me. Double-crossed and shot by the police, even more crooked than he was. I was relieved to hear the doll made it out okay, even though she's in Locke's hands now. With King gone, Mills acquired the rest of the PCPD forces to his side. The power of money has no equal, I guess. I know Locke. I served under him in the Great Pillow War of 38. He's competent, intelligent, disciplined, and the only man in this goddamn city that can actually follow up on his threats. I remember the day he was promoted to the chief of police. I thought it was a great choice. We all did. What a bunch of idealists we were. The years that followed took their toll on Locke. He was becoming more shady in his operations. Soon enough, it was impossible to distinguish his actions from the ones he was so rigorously condemning in his speeches. Now, he's nothing more than a common criminal. A dangerous one at that. With every threat I unravel, the outcome seems more bleak. Not only do I have to worry about a lunatic arsonist in the loose, now I have an entire goddamn police department to deal with. I can't get blindsided by all of this. I still have to find Amber. If what King told me holds any merit, seems logical, Locke would bring the doll back to the precinct for questioning. Just long enough for Red to conveniently find his way there. I have to get there fast, but that means I won't have any time to prepare my next move. It's time to find out if an old bear can still think on his feet. CBG has gone off the radar. I could really use his help right now. Things are finally starting to make some sense, and I use the term very loosely. Mills has gone insane out of fear. Both him and King thought they could use Red for their own gain. It was already too late when it dawned on them. He can't be reasoned with. Red kept on rampaging, and the only way to stop him is to deliver him the only thing he wants. I'm left wondering if Red really gets to Amber. It feels like I'm running towards a cliff with a blindfold on. But if something happens to the doll in the meantime, will there be a bridge for me at the end? Will there be any bridges left? At all? And then he goes, no way, my mom's name is Martha too. And then they're like best pals all of a sudden. Hmm, seems a bit contrived. Yeah, yeah, took me long enough, I know. I was just about to say. Mr. Bear, did you go to King's Island? I did, Binky, it's all gone. Uh, it's Brian, sir. What's Brian, sir? It's his name, Ted. What? What are you? Oh, Brian. Sure, I know that. What do you mean it's all gone? I heard there was a massive shootout there. You heard right, Sam. King's dead, and so are his men. That's huge, Bear. This will send a ripple through the entire city. Oh, I know. Anyways, where's Amber? The interrogation room. Where's Locke keeping her? Miss Ashworth? She's not here, Mr. Bear. What? Where? Are you lying to me? Calm down, Ted. We were here this entire time. They didn't bring her here. I don't understand this. Where did they take her? She's not here, Mr. Bear. The only person in the interrogation room right now is your bat friend. I have to. Wait, CBG's here? I'm not sure what happened, but he's been on our wanted list for some time now. Commissioner doesn't condone vigilante justice. I need to get inside and talk to him. Sam, listen. I found some stuff at King's that will clear up a lot of these things. Can I trust you with it? What is it? Is it safe to talk here? Well, it is a police station, Mr. Bear. You're right. Let's wait till we're somewhere safe. You got a place in mind? I'll meet you all later at the old lookout point above the city. You know the place, Sam. I'll give you this, but promise me you'll keep it on you at all times. This thing, Sam, it goes all the way to the top. I believe in you, Ted. I'll have a glance at it when we get somewhere safe. This is the night, Sammy. It's time to take them all down.
good to see she's okay. Hey there, doll. Glad to see you're okay. I wish I could say the same thing. Can you, like, drop the act just this once? No. It's more fun this way. Besides, you're not getting off the hook that easy. So, they brought you in for questioning. Oh, what gave it away? Me standing in the middle of the goddamn police station getting frustrated by incompetent idiots instead of relaxing at home? I already told you, miss. It's a standard procedure. No need for name call. Oh, shut the hell up. I mean, rude. So, what happened? You've cheated on me with what's-her-face. <sighs> I meant, why are you here? I honestly don't know, Ted. I was getting ready for work when the police came knocking on my door. They brought me here and told me to wait. They dragged poor Pete here as well. He seems... he seems okay with it. I have no idea what happened, but I bet it has something to do with you. Me? Who else? You show up unexpectedly, and the next thing I know, I get arrested the following day. Um, no one's getting arrested. It's a standard procedure, miss. Yeah. See, it's a standard procedure, miss. Don't you take his side! Anyways, do you have any idea what all this is about? This idiot wasn't exactly helpful. I'll never... just the meanest woman in the world. That cop outside told me they found CBG in the bay last night. I bet it had something to do with Red. You think CBG had a run-in with Red outside the diner? I must have missed him by, what, a couple of minutes? Dear lord, that's terrifying! Yeah, well, stay here for now. Even though it doesn't seem like it, the police station is probably the safest place for you to be right now. Are you going after that lunatic? Something like that. I need to find the doll first. I mean, of course you lost her. That's so typical. I didn't lose her. We had a fight and we parted ways. So where is she? That's what I'm trying to find out. Listen, doll, I need to get inside that interrogation room. What for? Bee's in there. I need to talk to him. CBG? He got arrested. Something about vigilante justice and junk. Oh, what nonsense! If anything, they should pay him for doing some actual police work around here. Right. Anyways, can you, well, keep that idiot over there busy for a while? Do I look like his supervisor? Keep him busy how, exactly? Well... You know. Wow, that's insulting in so many ways. You're really setting the bar high these days. Look, I'm not asking you to take him out to dinner. Just keep him entertained for a couple of minutes. Well, you snoop around the police station? Exactly. Fine, but you'll owe me for this. Sure, whatever. Just make sure he's focused on you. What in the hell? You know, do your woman-y thing. I'm literally speechless. I'm having a hard time believing that. Ugh, whatever. Just make it quick. You're the best, doll. I owe you one. I hope you get shot! Hey there, honey. I'm sorry I was a bit rude earlier. Oh, well, it's understandable, miss. My, you're so handsome. Didn't notice that before. And that mustache is just... Um... So great. Um, thank you, miss. It's a real mustache. Well, of course it is. You're such a dashing young man. I bet all the girls just go crazy for you. Girls? What girls? Have they said something? So, is being a cop dangerous? I bet it's all sorts of dangerous. You must be so brave. Well, it is. I mean, it can be. The other day... They sent me to a donut shop, and on the way back, a bee flew into my mouth. Oh my, what on earth did you do? Well, I swallowed it, but, you know, no big deal. Amazing. You must have such stories. Yeah, this one time, my friend Dave and I threw a rock at a fish, and it just flipped over like, bloop, just floated up. Wow, go on. And this one time at band camp... All right, buddy, I'm here. Let's do this. So, what do we have here? You better start spilling the beans, you lowlife, or this cocktail party might end early. What the? What? Whoa, whoa, whoa there, buddy. Who the hell are you? What do you mean? I'm the bad cop. The what? The bad cop, you know. 
good cop, bad cop routine. Get into it, guy. I thought that only works in movies. And it's Officer Lawrence. What's Officer Lawrence? It's my name. Yeah, yeah. Listen, pal. Are we doing this or not? I don't have all night. I guess. Wait, where's your badge? It's in the last guy who asked me that. In him? What? All right, sweetheart. You better tell me everything you know. About what? About your pension plan. The Red Man Cupcake. You working for him? What's he paying you? What the hell are you talking about, Ted? My name's not Ted. It's Bentley Dangers. That's Officer Dangers to you, buddy. Don't know that Ted fellow, but he sounds awesome. Sure. Well, Officer, as I already told your partner here, I'm not saying another word unless you tell me what I'm being charged for. Obstruction of justice, impersonating the man of the law, withholding information. That's some of the big dogs right there. You're going away for a long time, scumbag. Okay, so let's go step by step. What happened last night? After I left your place, I waved your wife goodbye from the street and then I went home. Huh. He got you. He got you good. Anyway, what happened last night? Look. I was at the docks. The docks? What were you doing there? Seems to me a good friend might have told you to stay away from that place. Well, I was on my way home when I noticed Clark in the water. Clark the stalker? Nice circle of friends you have. He's not my goddamn friend, but I couldn't just let the guy drown. Why not? It's... what do you mean, why not? Anyways, I was ready to shoot him with my grappling gun. Sure. When I heard something behind me. Was it destiny? No. It was that red-hooded freak. Hmm. What do you think, partner? Hmm. Not sure. Dangers? Okay, so, then what happened? How did you end up in the bay? Well, your wife wanted to go skinny dipping, and I hate to disappoint her, too. Oh, snap. You got served, Lawrence. You got served. Haha, <laughs> right? Shut up, you. As I said, I was about to pull Clark out of the bay when I heard someone behind me. I turned around, and there he was. He was as close to me as you two idiots. You better watch your mouth, Mary. And he was coming in hot, Bear. He was swinging left and right like, like a goddamn maniac. I did a sweet backflip, and I ended up in the bay. He was just standing there, waiting for us to get back up. So we started swimming the other way. And that's when we found you. What happened to the other guy, that Clark fellow? He went home, I presume. Listen, I didn't do nothing. You're wasting your time and my time. Are you in a hurry? I promised your mom I would take her out dancing tonight. Oh, that's it, pal. You've done it now. Lawrence, son, go and grab us a cup of coffee from across the street. This is going to get ugly. Sure thing, Dangers. How do you take it? Get me a peppermint soy latte. No foam. Extra hot. Can I get a Sanka? You'll keep your mouth shut if you know what's good for you. Okay, what the hell, Ted? Shut up. Listen, I'm here to bust you out. Do you have anything on you that might help us? Sure, I have some stuff in my utility belt, but they took it away. It's probably in the evidence room. I'll go and check. Don't move. So funny. I would laugh, but the restraints hurt my hands when I do. Well, that's inconspicuous. Brandon, son, I need to get inside the evidence room, somehow. I have a key, Mr. Bear, but... It's okay, son. He just needs to borrow it real quick. Ted's not a thief. You can say that again. I guess. Here you go, Mr. Bear. Just... It's okay, Chief. You'll get it back. CBG's utility belt must be in there. Thank you, Brennan.
I hope I get sent to Drinkendor. It's CBG's gadget belt. Got it. I should head back. What the? Whoa. What in the hell? Well, you took your sweet time. I got antsy, so I improvised a bit. What the? You blew a hole in the police station wall. Ah, don't worry. I'll send them an anonymous contribution. Sure. B, listen. Sam and I are meeting later tonight at the old place. I stumbled onto some new information you might find interesting. I'll be there, Snoop. Watch your back, you crazy loon. Let me guess. It took me long enough. Your word, Snoop. Rookie over there seems nervous. First time toppling the oppressive regime, kiddo. Don't worry about me, Mr. Bear. I'm here to help. And what made you switch sides so suddenly? I'm only asking because the other 99% of the police force is as crooked as it gets. I know, Mr. Bear. That's one of the main reasons I'm here with you tonight. It's... It just doesn't feel right anymore. You mean your boss following the dollar-shaped crumbs that pig is throwing him? Well, there's that. Yeah. Also, I really care for Miss Ashworth. I want to help in any way I can. As you should, son. Okay. So what's going on here? I didn't sign up to be a babysitter, Ted. Sam, did you have time to go through that case I gave you? I glanced over it. It's big, Snoop. King compiled everything to put Mills away for good. I mean, there's photos of the meeting with Red, audio logs, a list of people on the take, everything. So, what's the plan? Sam, you go back to Paper Daily and do your thing. Just make sure this hits the streets by tomorrow morning. Once it's out in public, Mills is going to have the whole city after him. You got it, pal. Brian, son, you go through that list in that briefcase and gather all the cops you can find that are not on it. Get it? Yes, sir, Mr. Bear. And that leaves us. You, loon. We need to find Amber. Last I know, she was at King's Island, but Locke was there with his bulls. I don't know where they took her, but it sure wasn't the precinct. And King? He's gone to the big one, B. Just like that? We can start at the mayor's mansion and... No need for that, Bear. I know where they took her. What? How could you know that? There's something I need for you to see before we go get her, Ted. What is it? Go to the East Tunnel. The one that leads... To Flint's room. Yeah, I know. Or does it, Ted? What do you mean? Listen to me, Ted. Go and see for yourself, and then come meet me downtown. The girl will be there. How will I know where to find? Oh, god damn it. That's right, Bear. Look for the seagulls. Look at where they flock. B, god damn it, I don't have time for this. I thought you snoops were supposed to keep an open mind. I... I'm your friend, Ted, and I care for the girl. You just... you have to trust me on this one. Go through the tunnel and see where it takes you. After that, come find me at the place where the seagulls flock. If this turns out to be a wild seagull chase, B... We won't get another chance. You understand that? I do, Bear. All right. I trust you. I'll go scout ahead. Assess the threat level. Meet me after you're done. Brian. Sir? Once you gather those few good men, meet us downtown. If it all goes as planned, we could get rid of that bastard Mills and the Red Man. All in the same night. So, we're really doing this, aren't we? Heat's getting to you, buddy. Good thing I can keep a cool head, yeah? Hmm. Ted? Goddamn. I need a drink. That was an odd dot to connect. Well, you said cool head, and I thought of... Ice? Yeah, ice. And how it goes well with carrot juice and... Hey, lowlifes, are you guys? Can you hear me? Whoa there, what's that? Is that, is it expanding?
what's happening to the room. Why is all the stuff disappearing? If I had taken it earlier, it would be level 12 by now. I'll keep it for now. I need to get out of here. Some famous painter once said, when I don't have red, I use blue. What does that even mean? Is it just conventions flying out the window? Or is it a form of compromise? Until now, I thought the colors were pretty straightforward. Sun is yellow, sky is blue, and so on. But then again, I was never much of an artist. That's Amber's thing. What happens when all the colors come crashing down on you, like the world's most colorful tidal wave? I have no idea what I just witnessed. The violent, abrupt clashing of what can only be described as different realities. Ones that can't coexist in the same space. I was never a superstitious man. I valued logic and reason above all things, none of which I found in there. Flint's room is not his room anymore, it's just a storage. I was there before. I saw his room. Didn't I? The mugshot boys. What happened to them? They seemed dead, but somehow still alive. It's like they got caught somewhere in between Paper City and the other reality. Not quite dead, but not alive either. I'm positive whatever the hell that was in there, I would suffer the same fate as those two lowlifes had I decided to stay a bit longer. I can't grasp any of this anymore. I'm missing something, a key component. How is all of this connected? What am I not seeing here? I have to get to Amber. I need to get her away from Mills before he hands her over to Red. With Locke and PCPD on his side, that won't be an easy task, though. And I have to be prepared for anything. I have to find her and tell her what I found out. Maybe she can make sense of all this. He told me to follow the seagulls, and I would find Amber. Any other day, I'd call him crazy and tell him to go home and rest, but not today. I have a bad feeling about the outcome of tonight's events, but I have no choice. I have to keep on. I have to finish this despite all odds. I'm done following logic, as it didn't bring me anywhere so far. It's time to sacrifice my principles at the altar of greater good, and follow my gut on this one. In other words, if I don't have red, I'll use blue instead, whatever the hell that means. you long enough. I mean... Did you see it? I don't know what I saw, B. How's your investigation going? Regarding the kid? I'm completely lost here, B. I need to get to the doll. Maybe she can make some sense out of all this, but first things first. What things? We need to get to her, B. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Don't worry, Snoop. Any news from the rest of the breakfast club? No, but I trust they'll pull through on their end. I can't believe you were right about the damn seagulls, you nut. What's the deal with that? I told you, Bear. The gulls are just the means. Mills paid off someone to train them. They're carrying recording devices on them. It's how that pig keeps everything in check. God damn it. Keep your voice down. I mean, it's not surprising. Information is power, Snoop. All of this is insane, B. It's like some cheesy crime drama. Yeah, and you know how those things end for guys like us, right? Huh. Perish the thought, buddy. And hope we don't perish with it. All right. I'll take care of the mustache club by the entrance. You take care of the one patrolling on the right. Wait. What do you mean, take care of him? You know, take him out. That's an armed policeman. And you're an armed, desperate man. Which one of you, do you think, has the upper hand? I'm not going to shoot the man, B. Who said anything about shooting? Use your wits. Craft something. Isn't that your thing? I... You might be confusing my life with that of my Givers. Just think of something. Sure, sure, whatever. Are you ready? I'm always ready.
have a feeling tomorrow's issue will be sold out. I'll just grab one of these. CBG got him good. These walkies might come in handy. CBG got him good. This is Wiley Coyote level of genius. I have to wait till he turns his back. Here we go. Eagle calling dog. The chicken hit the floor. Over. Hmm. Looks like a good alternative route up. Here goes nothing. who decided to show up. It took you long enough. Oh, were you waiting? My apologies. Oh, I see the dog got tangled up in some rope. I'm sure you don't mind if I... Ted, son, be smart about this. Oh, so you do mind. Come on now, Ted. Don't make me do something we'll both regret. I'm sorry, Sarge, but I came here to get my partner, and you know I won't leave without her. You stop right there, Private. God damn it, Ted, don't force this on me. What happened to you, man? You weren't always this crooked. I'm not judging. I'm just curious. This city happened to me, Ted. It took me a while, but eventually I saw it. There is no right and wrong, you see. Nothing that's black and white. It's rather gray. All of it. All the time. And that's coming from a cop. And, well, yes. A cop. You see, even a priest has to ask himself, eventually, is anyone really listening? What's your endgame here? You know Red will probably kill her. What happens to you then, to all of us? I don't think it will come to that. See, besides, in her recent absence, we learned how to, well, exist nonetheless. You're in denial about this. Without her, there's nothing. Besides, don't you care about her? What will happen to her? I have a city to protect, Bear. One girl against a million? Now, I'm not a mathematician, but... You'll never get away with this. Oh, I will. I'll get away with it. You see, I'm the commissioner. You really are a piece of work, you know that. I mean, Mills, I can understand. He has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. But you were a goddamn good man, once. Dead, son. Be reasonable about this. No, no, no need for anyone to get hurt. Spare me the public speech, will you? You know he's going to kill her. Anyways, the jig is up. King provided me with enough evidence to put you two clowns away for good. King? Come on, Ted. King's no longer of anyone's concern. Yeah, you took care of that. If you weren't so full of yourself, you would sweep his house a bit better. There were a lot of things you overlooked. Is this... will this be a problem? He's bluffing, Daniel. It's what he does. Anyways, I'd love to chit-chat some more, but the doll looks... uncomfortable, if you don't mind. Ted, stop! Ted, listen to them! Please! Don't worry, doll. It would be low, even for them, to shoot an unarmed man. Or not. Ted! Such... such power. Incredible. You and him, 
You're made from the same cloth, girlie. You! How could you let this happen? Please don't kill me. Please. I, I, I'm just a... I'm just a humble public servant. Please, girl. I'm not going to. I'm not a... Oh my god, Ted! Hey there, doll. <laughs> I, uh, I leave you for like a minute and look what happens. Oh, shut up, Ted. You had every right to leave me. I was acting like a child. Well, you are ten. Don't talk. The medics are on the way. No, no, listen, listen, I have to tell you something. You'll tell me later, okay? Listen, I... <laughs> I went to Flint's room. I used the same tunnel as those lowlifes. You went back to the house? Doll, Flint's, Flint's room. It, it wasn't there. I mean, it, it was, but it, it disappeared. What do you mean? Ted, you're hurt. <laughs> listen, listen to me this one time. God damn it. It's not just there. His room is just a, just a storage. I mean, it turned into a storage before my eyes. It's, it's like he was never there. I can't explain it, doll. I... I have no idea what the hell is going on here, but I know one, one thing. You have to end this. This is, this is all, all about you. It was always about you. <laughs> you, you have to face that red bastard doll alone. I'm afraid. You, really? Ted, please, I can't do this without you. It's, it's the only way, Amber. You've... Doll, I'm really sorry I left you like that. It was totally... Totally out of character. I should have known better. <laughs> oh, shut up, please. It was all my fault. Everything. I shouldn't have eaten that cookie. Nothing's your fault. Life is just unfair sometimes, doll, and you'll have plenty of time to feel bad about it when you grow up. You shouldn't be so hard on yourself. The, uh, the weight of the world is not on you. Try to remember that. I'm sure you'll be a great actress one day, or an artist, or whatever you end up doing. You'll be great at anything. <laughs> Ted, please don't leave me. Please don't leave me again. I can't do this without you. Sure. <clears throat> sure. Sure you can. The talk we had recently made it very clear. I was being hurtful on purpose. I don't believe that. But it's the truth. I got old, Amber. I made a promise. Some time ago, I would keep you safe. A promise? At first, I didn't even like you. <laughs> you were loud and <laughs> would always drag me around by the foot, and you were too damn cheerful for my taste. <laughs> you were always so grumpy. I honestly thought it would never work. I'm, I'm really glad I had to make that promise, because I got to know you. I got to watch you grow up, and you became my best friend and the best damn partner I could have asked for. Don't. You gave this old bear a purpose, and I'm really grateful for that. And all I have to say in the end is that I'm really proud of you, doll. And I'm really lucky to have been a part of your life. Ted. No! No, don't die! Ted! Ted, come back! Come back, please! Ted! Mr. Mayor, you're, um, you're under arrest, sir. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. Oh, what have I done? I can't remember the first time we met. I was too young back then. You were always there for me, even before I could really appreciate it. And even though I don't remember it, I could always feel it. When you were with me, I always felt safe. Protected. 
What do I do now when life gets scary? Who do I go to when I'm sad? Who is going to sit with me on my bedroom floor and laugh at my attempts to draw a horse or listen to my bad jokes? Mom and dad have so much on their minds lately and I can't always run to them for every little thing. I could rely on you for that. I could. It was you who left, but a part of me went away with you as well. You were my shoulder to cry on when I was all sad and mopey. You were my support so I don't fall. And if I did, you were there to comfort me and to show me how I can do better. I was never lonely because you were there. You knew all my secrets, fears, hopes, and plans. You scolded me often when I would cross the line, and you always gave me advice. You taught me so many things, and in a way, a lot of what I learned about life, I learned through you, with you. When we went on adventures together, those were some of my favorite days. I would always get you in so much trouble, but you didn't mind. You acted like you did but you cared for me too much to hold it against me. You were my best friend, and I miss you so much already. I will cherish our time together, and I will always remember you. At least until we meet again. Partner. I have to get past that thing. Oh my god, you scared the living daylight out of me. Hey girl, where do you think you're going? You know where I'm going. I do. That's why I'm here. I hope you didn't come here to stop me. Listen, girl. Ted was a dear friend of mine. I don't want to talk about it. I understand, but listen. This here, it's a suicide mission. I don't care anymore, B. I'm going to stop him once and for all. All those people that had suffered because I was afraid. If you go after him alone, it'll end up tragically. Were... were you there? I was caught up with Paper City's finest, and I got there too late. It... it was heartbreaking seeing that. Ted was a great bear. He really was. I'll miss him so much. Don't let his death be in vain. Think this thing through. I... I have to do this. He's after me, and I'm done hiding. Either he'll get me, or I'll get him. But in any case, it'll stop his reign of terror. I get it. It's just... Maybe you don't have to do this alone, you know? I have to. Ted told me it's something I have to do on my own. Besides, you know you guys can't go through these woods. How did you know to come here? I remembered you telling us you followed his footsteps back here to Sorrow Hills. Me and my big mouth, eh? CBG, thank you for everything. You really are the hero Paper City needs and deserves. Don't ever stop fighting for what you believe is right. I don't intend to, girl. I'm worried if something happens to you, there'll be no city for me to watch over anymore. Paper City has grown beyond me. I'm sure you guys will be fine. You don't sound too optimistic. Should I worry? Don't. Please. I'll be fine. Well then. I hope this isn't goodbye, little miss. Don't be silly. We'll see each other again. Godspeed, girl. Ted might be gone, but I'm sure he's gonna be with you all the way. Make him proud. Make us all proud. Bye, CBG. Till we meet again, Amber.
I guess I should go up. Why did you even make these, Mom? Because you're right. It's not my fault you can have it. Stop it, you two. Don't get my little child, Amber. You have your I made that bed for the plant. They smell so good, though. I always get these mundane ones. Fine. Maybe next time you won't get any at all. Would that make it better? Tragic. Can't I just have one? No. Can't have one man with him without any trauma. You know you can't have any. Maybe the allergies have subsided. I read somewhere that can happen. Ever please. But I want some. He always gets to have some of mine as well, and I can't have any of his. It's not fair. Tell him, tell him. Of course this is here. Ugh. Ugh, just ugh. A pinifrin? I'll take it with me. It's an empty syringe. I don't like where this is going. It worked! The cap is off. Oh my god, I can't even look at it. Okay, it's done. I just want to get rid of it. Here you go, Mr. Doctor, sir. Who decided to show up? What are you talking about? Show up where? What is this place? You don't recognize this? It kind of looks like that ballet studio mom used to take me to. But you hated it, didn't you? It's not like you would be good at it. You have fat feet. Hey, who do you think you are? I'm the real you. By the way, this cute, polite mask you're hiding under, that's not you. You don't know anything about me. Are you kidding? I am you. You're really losing it, aren't you? Talk to yourself much? Shut up. You're not me. You're rude and ugly, and you have fat feet. You spoiled brat. You're a burden to everyone around you. Everyone's always taking care of you so you don't have to think about the consequences. Why are you doing this? I want you to drop that mask you're hiding under. I don't know what. It was all your fault. You and your stupid allergies. Shut up. I see what you're doing. They should lock you up in a glass bell. Shut up. And Ted died because of you. I... Oh, you think I don't know? It was you acting like a little spoiled brat that got him killed. He said it wasn't my fault! Of course he did. He was looking after you like everyone else. Don't you dare talk to me about Ted! He was my best friend! And you 
got him killed. Stop talking about him. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Stop repeating after me. Stop repeating after me. I said stop. I'm sorry. It's okay, honey. You just have to realize you're dead and I. We won't always be there for you. You need to learn these things for yourself. You saw what happened tonight. I'm sorry. I won't eat them anymore. You can still make them for Flint if you want. I promise I won't eat them anymore. Do you think it's best that we stay clear from that planet? Don't worry about Flint. He just Yeah, I'm stupid. Oh my god, Tom! What is it? Oh my god, is that our building? Mom? Dad, what's going on? Another me. Why are you wearing that? Is that you, Red? Fine, be like that. There's just all sorts of you, isn't there? You mean all sorts of you? I'm not buying that. I'm nothing like you at all. What do you want? What do I have to do? I have something for you. Is that... what is that? Here's the deal. Give me something in return and you get to find out. Quid pro quo, Clarice. Who's under that? Uh-uh. That's, That's not how this works. What do you want? Pick three. Any three. Give them to me. If I do that, will you bring him back? What'll happen to the ones I give you? Talk is cheap, they get to do it. What do you want me to do? Pick three. Any three. Give them to me. Three keys for three picks. Let's try it. She's such a badass. I hope you can forgive me. He might not be all there, but he is all heart. I'm really not okay with this. They risked a lot for me. Is this the last one? Brian, he was so nice to me. He watched over me. So I guess it's a trade machine of sorts? But she was your mom's doll, and she cares for you. Don't pick her. Come on, not him. Who will watch over your city now? Don't choose the bunnies. You know they risked their necks for you? They went against King and helped you get into Paper City. This is how you repay them? I'm so sorry, guys. Please forgive me. Give them to me! There, you freak. Pledge them to me and ask in return. You can have all of them. Just bring him back. You monster! 
monster! Why would you do this? Is that him? No. No! 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 Oh great, another one. Just go through one of the doors, please. Find an empty spot and stay there. I'll come and check up on you later. I think you got me confused with someone else. What is this place? It's a customer support center. Wait, you're not here for the job? Where did you come from? Like, outside? Oh, look at you, Miss Outside. I don't appreciate your attitude, to be honest. I'm leaving. <sighs> Good luck with that. There's no leaving this place. What do I need to do? Aren't you the famous world traveler, Miss Outside? What do I know? I'm just a service provider. Okay, I get it. Help me, I need, ugh, customer service. Have you tried turning it on again? Turn what on? Your brain. Are you making fun of me? I'll report you. All reports are to be submitted in writing and deposited in an official complaint box. The review could take up to 10 working days. Please be patient and don't hesitate to ask for help in the meantime. And remember, we're only happy if you're happy. Whatever, what do I need to do? You have to find out something. What? There was this old man. He used to live alone in our building on Whitewater. Remember back in the city? Remember? I guess. I can't remember his name though. I don't know. I can't remember either. Anyways, find out what happened to him. How? Ask around. I can't hold your hand. Fine. After I find out, I'm out of here. Sure. Is this the same me? Hello there, how can I be of assistance? What? How is this? Where am I? It's the customer service, ma'am. How can I help you? What do you mean? It's me. I don't know your stupid answer. I'm trying to leave. Answer? Your stupid question about our neighbor, whatever his name was? I'm sorry, miss, but you must have me confused with someone else. Is there something I can help you with? Are you kidding me? Um, I mean, joking and kidding wasn't part of my orientation? Fine, whatever. I just want to get out of here. What is it that you want? Me? Ma'am, I don't want anything. I'm just here to help you. How can I be of assistance, miss? Hey, do you know what happened to our neighbor from Whitewater Street? You know, back in the city? Which one? The old man. I always felt sorry for him. He seemed so lonely. The old man from 15D? Oh yeah, that's right, 15D. What was his name? I can't remember. I... I can't remember either. I remember feeling sorry for him, cause I thought he lived alone. I think he had a wife, miss. She would always bake those cookies for the kids. Remember how every time she would make them, their entire floor would smell so good? What was that smell? I can't remember. Don't worry, miss. I'm sure it'll come to you. In any case, don't forget. 
He was in apartment 15D. Yeah, thanks. I'll remember. Hello, miss. How can I help you? Hey, do you know what happened to our neighbor from back in the city? I'm not sure which neighbor you mean, ma'am. The lonely old man. I'm afraid I need some more information in order to help you. What apartment was he in? 15D? Oh yeah, I remember now. He had a cat. Dinah, right? Can't remember his name, though. Weird. Oh, I've totally forgotten about Dinah. She was so cute. But yeah, that guy. I can't remember his name either. Never mind, I'll get it. Thanks anyways. Glad I could help, miss. Listen, I don't have a lot of patience left, so let's just cut to the chase. Oh, by all means. Okay, do you know what happened to our neighbor from the city? Which one? Ugh, I can't remember his name. Okay, was there anything about him that stood out? He had the cutest cat named Dinah. Oh, you mean Mr. Morgan? Mr. Morgan, that's right. That was his name. How could I forget that? Are you satisfied with the service I provided? What? Oh, yeah. That was great, thank you. I'm only happy if you're happy. That's kind of sad. Tell me about it. Just give up already. You're never going to leave. Shut up. I won't be held here by your lack of incentive. You are not me and it shows. That's why you're stuck here. Look at you, all full of energy and life. I was just like that. Well, what happened? Your life happened. That's all sorts of vague, right? Anyways, I remembered the name of our neighbor downstairs. Mr. Morgan? It was, wasn't it? I remember now, he was that heavy smoker, that guy. Remember, I don't think I ever saw him without a, a cigarette. That's right. And he was really lonely. He wasn't lonely. He had a wife. I can vaguely remember her, but she would bake these cinnamon cookies for the kids, remember? I guess. I remember that cinnamon smell now that you mention it. Mr. Morgan, that's right. Now you just have to find out what happened to him. All right, I'll take a stab in the dark here. I don't know. Well, go and find out. Hello again. Did you find out what happened to our neighbor? No, not yet. I remembered his name though. It was Mr. Morgan. Oh, that's right. That was his name. Did you find out if he had a wife? Oh yeah, he did apparently and Yes, she used to make these cookies for the kids in our building. What kind of cookies? I still remember the smell. What was it? Cinnamon. She used to make cinnamon cookies. Oh yeah, I remember now. Those were so great. Yeah. Oh no. What is it? I remember now. I think his wife passed away. She was sick and bedridden for some time, and one day she just... Died. That's right. Poor guy, he was heartbroken. I remember now. Yeah, such a tragedy. Well, this took a dark turn. Anyways, thank you. You were very helpful. No problem, miss. If there's anything else, please let me know.
Hi there. Welcome. How can I be of assistance? Yeah, do you know what happened to our neighbor from Whitewater Street? Which one? The lonely old man. Oh, that guy. He wasn't lonely. He had a wife. Didn't he? What happened to her? Um, she passed away. Oh no, what happened? She was sick. Poor guy. I bet he was devastated. I guess that's why he... What? Would spend his days in that bar down the street. I guess he didn't feel so alone there. Yeah, I guess he needed to be around people. What was the name of that place? It's on the tip of my tongue. I think it was Long Gone Day, miss. Oh yeah. Anyways, thank you. See you later. Bye, miss. Don't hesitate to ask for assistance. We're only happy if you're happy. Oh, great. A customer. Oh, great. A cheerful employee. What do you want? Well, nicer attitude would be a good start, but I need to know what happened to our neighbor back from the city. Which neighbor? The lonely old man. Oh, the one that used to hang in the dive bar down the street. What was the name of that place? The Long Gone Day? Oh, yeah, you're right. Funny name, though. So, yeah, what does that have to do with anything? Well, you see, after his wife died, he would spend his days there. I remember him as being a heavy smoker. After his wife died, he picked up another habit. Oh no, poor guy. Yeah, he would always come home late at night and he could barely walk. I feel so sorry for him. What happened to him? And I can't remember, but I have a feeling if you're hoping for a happy end, you'll be disappointed. I have to find out. I need to know what happened to him. Sure. I'll be here if you need my help. Hello there, miss. Um, how can I help you? Listen, do you know what happened to our neighbor from the city? Which neighbor? That lonely old man? Oh yeah, I remember him. I remember him as being kind, but something was wrong with him, right? He had a bit of a drinking problem. Oh, that's right. It all started after his wife passed away. He would spend his days in that dive bar down the street. What was the name? The Long Gone Day. Long Gone Day, that's it. Oh, what is it? I remember now. So what happened to him? He, I'm sorry to say this, but well, he died. Wait, really? Poor guy. What happened? There was this accident and I think it's best if you talk to my supervisor about that. Are you kidding? Tell me. He came home one night and he was drunk. I remember hearing about it somewhere. Apparently he fell asleep with a cigarette and his apartment. Oh no. His apartment caught on fire. The fire department couldn't do nothing about it. They were too late. That's terrible. Such a tragedy. How come I don't remember any of that? I really don't know. But please, miss, talk to our supervisor. She might be able to help you remember. Fine, I'll talk to her. She's not exactly the nicest. She can be difficult, but you have to understand she's been here the longest. Okay, I'll go and talk to her. Thank you, by the way. You were very helpful. Glad I could help, miss. Such a sad story. It really is. Oh, Miss Outside. Did you find out what happened? I did. So, what happened? He... He died. He fell asleep with a cigarette and his apartment burned down. Sadly, that's right. Why did you make me do this? It's for your own good. It doesn't feel good. Not all good things feel that way. I can't... Listen, isn't it a bit strange you forgot all about that? It's very strange. You think I forgot on purpose? No one can forget on purpose. You forgot because it was easier. It just happened. So, what now? Do I need to find something else for you, or...
What's going on? Did you... Hey, where'd you go? What just happened? This, this is our old apartment. Is someone here? Mom? Dad? Flint? any closer. I, I have a sword and I'm not afraid to use it. I wasn't ready, and Red I made it difficult ready. for me not and to hate Red him. I don't know what'll happen him. now. 
how can I? Will, happen now? Will it all go back to how it was before? Will, it all go Will I ever see Ted again? Will I ever see Flint again? again? I understand what happened, and I know now Red was a necessary evil. And I know still now going back to Paper City gave me this feeling of still hope. Going back hope to I might paper find it gave me this feeling of hope. hope. Just hope I might find it. if I keep hope looking just for him, him, maybe I could see him again. If I, I didn't feel so looking for him, him, maybe I could see him again. Something I was I feeling feel deep so down ever since that day. Something I don't want to feel like that again. Down Life without hope is misery. I don't want to feel like that again. And it feels like you're waiting for a train that's long been cancelled. And it feels like you're waiting for a train that's long been cancelled. I need to get some sleep. I'll be wiser tired and rambling. After all, I need to get going to be a brand new day tomorrow. After all, it's going to be a brand new day. Wake up! It seems you had a nightmare. I don't really remember. That's all right, miss. Nightmares are best forgotten. You want it back. This piece of you. I remembered everything. I understand now, at least, that it wasn't my fault. Sometimes life is unfair. Ted taught me that. If I hadn't eaten that cookie, we would have been home when it happened. Maybe Flint would have gotten out okay, but maybe someone else would get hurt. No one can know that. All I know is that I miss him so much. I thought if I pretend he's just hiding that maybe, I don't know, that maybe I could see him again somehow. I didn't feel so helpless anymore. Somewhere along the way, I got lost in my own fantasy and it got difficult for me to stop pretending. Mom and Dad told me so many times it wasn't my fault, but I wouldn't accept it and I know now that was wrong. You can't outrun sadness, so there's no point in trying. The only way to get over something is just to face it head on. I guess in his own way, that was what Red was trying to do. He was destroying this fabrication I made around myself in hopes of reaching me. But it was only when I lost Ted too that I got the strength to stand up to him. And I see now it was what he wanted all along. I know I'll never see Flint again, and it makes me sad. But as Ted once said, life gets sad sometimes. All I have to do is push through and happiness will find me again. I need to get some sleep now. I'll be wiser tomorrow. After all, it's going to be a brand new day. Thank you.